that brings us to all the drama this week about the uh, physical and human infrastructure bills, the bipartisan bill for physical infrastructure and the so-called Build Back Better Reconciliation Bill, which is mostly about social spending, a little bit about climate, a real little bit. Um, and I think, you know, what I'm getting out of this is that, you know, with Biden over there talking to the Democrats yesterday, they're going to come to a deal, but Biden told them to compromise. So Biden and Pelosi also uh, told the progressives, you better settle for somewhere between 1.9 and 2.3 trillion. Of course, Manchin's still insisting on 1.5 trillion is his top line. But uh, I think you we foreshadowed what's going to happen. It's going to be cut because uh, Pramila J. Paul, who is the chair of the Progressive Caucus, said uh, we're going to have to compromise further. So this thing keeps shrinking. You have to remember Biden's original plan was 6.1 trillion. That was both the American Families Plan and American Jobs Plan, social infrastructure, physical infrastructure. And that was scaled down uh, to 3.5 trillion by August when both houses of Congress adopted this budget blueprint. But again, for the progressives, you know, Bernie Sanders was talking about 6 trillion. A lot of the progressive movement groups were talking about 10 trillion. And some of the progressives in Congress, like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, raised that number, but that was earlier in the year. So they keep keep shrinking their expectations, lowering their expectations. And the Congressional Progressive Caucus is kind of crowing about itself because they did succeed in keeping the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which is about $550 billion in new spending, linked to the larger reconciliation bill. And OK, give them that. It's the first time in 25 years that the Congressional Progressive Caucus has really ever acted together to get anything. I can remember when we were fighting the Iraq war, at first we could only get 25 of them to be opposed to it. It took a year of lobbying to get that up to 125 and still a majority of Democrats joined the Republicans in authorizing that war. And you got people in the Congressional, Congressional Progressive Caucus who are also in the New Democrat Coalition, which is the legacy of the Democratic Leadership Conference that pushed the Democrats to the right in the 80s and 90s. Jesse Jackson used to call them the DLC, Democrats for the leisure class. Well, they're alive and well. In fact, their caucus is larger than the Progressive Caucus. And that really tells you who still has the upper hand in scaling back this spending. And I think from what Jayapal said yesterday, the progressives are going to eat that and accept that. So we will see what's in the social infrastructure bill the reconciliation bill for the care economy, we'll see what survives. There are a lot of proposals. They're all things that this backward country should have done a long time ago. I mean, there are only like four other countries in the world that don't have paid family leave. And there are countries like Papua New Guinea, which is dirt poor. And most people, you know, live in extended families and tribal groups, not in the cash economy. So uh, paid family leave is hardly even a question there. So we're backward in so many respects, health care, public education. And this bill uh, was designed to bring us up to the 21st or the 20th century, really. And uh, it's being scaled back to the point where can those programs really be funded? Um, so that's one question. We already know that the climate policies are just not up to the job. I did a detailed critique of what Biden proposed originally 2.3 trillion American jobs plan, you know, and it was an eight-year plan. There's only about 100 billion a year for climate and energy measures. Uh, you know, when we budgeted the Eco Socialist Green New Deal, it was 2.75 trillion a year, or 27 and a half trillion over 10 years. Uh, Bernie Sanders Green New Deal was 16.3 trillion. The progressive environmental movement they had, the uh, a, a Thrive Agenda that the Green New Deal Network was promoting, that was 10 trillion. The Roosevelt Institute came out with their $10 trillion plan over 10 years, a trillion dollars a year. And uh, this has been scaled back from 10% of that, 100 billion. So, and then you look at the policies, there are things like promoting natural gas development, Biden's out there handing out leases to fossil fuel, uh, drilling on public lands, 
permitting Enbridge Line 3, the Dakota Access Pipeline. I mean, it's fossil fuel infrastructure plus the subsidies, about $20 billion a year to the fossil fuel industry, reportedly are still in this bill. So this is not a climate bill, which means as Greens, we got to keep pushing for a full eco-socialist Green New Deal because we're not going to have a climate plan without it. We don't have a climate plan. And that's what I'm seeing coming out of this reconciliation bill. We're going to have a few token gestures, some of them in the right direction, some of them in the wrong direction. There's no way we're going to get to Biden's stated goal. What did he say? 50 to 52 percent. 52 percent is just grabbed out of his ass. He has no numbers to back that up. But about half of our carbon emissions in nine years by 2030? No way. So we got a big problem. Um, so that's something we got to stay on top of. We'll see how this plays out. Biden's going out to, you know, sell the plan to the public this week, which means they're not going to adopt it this week in all likelihood. Manchin wants to wait till next year to actually negotiate the details. They got a problem, but I think in the end they'll work it out, but the end is going to be late, especially on climate.